Hi, beautiful tribe. And today is specifically for women, but as you'll learn, men and women listen to both sides um, on my channel because you have to know both sides in order to navigate relationships. <laughs> and I am your, um, your Tantra specialist, relationship coach, long standing, um, 17 years now. So I'm going to speak about something that I feel is a good discussion to have with young women especially and of course women of all ages now these days but uh, it's certainly information that I don't see being put out there that is really important for young women and you know when I say that I'm talking teens 20s 30s mostly because usually by your 40s you kind of have figured this out by experience or your own <laughs> stories about these things and I happen I'm gonna share about my own life because I happen to have some uh, you know kind of my own life dovetails with these messages so well um, which is why I know this information because of what I got exposed to early in life that helped me make the informed decisions I have around marriage and children and you know just that typical I guess progression of how often people go into the, these certain patterns in life and I chose specifically not to do that particular program and it's because there is an under, underbelly to it that a lot of people miss until they're in it and then they don't really have a choice a lot of times but to work with it once they're in it because it's not something you can easily step away from when you have children or a marriage in place um, without it being getting really complicated. So before stepping into such things, it's good to have a sense of, and a reality check around the pros and cons of each choice. And so I'm going to speak on behalf of, you know, this underbelly side that we often don't talk about because it seems like in the media, in movies, just the general vibe I get and ha was given. Uh, I grew up Christian and there seems to be kind of this, you know, there's in America at least, there's a little bit of this fairy tale ish vibe around marriage and kids and this living happily ever after and. You know how getting married is like oh it's gonna be so great and uh you know life's gonna be so much better and different and and then you know the excitement around the bringing children in and then you know this reality check hits a lot of times i find and i've observed many times where the woman or man or both are somewhat like oh this is actually uh, not exactly what I signed up for whether the marriage has issues or the parent or the kids having kids there's issues there's you know it's not an easy path and I observed a lot with my own parents and with the families that I worked with because I was prolific uh, in my babysitting career starting at age eight because I was just so mature for my age I was and very good with children and naturally, you know, motherly and just understood how to work with children that I just observed a lot of stuff at a very young age as to how families were operating, how they were, you know, in their own relationships, uh, marriages, as well as with their children. And then in my very own home of growing up, I also was a witness to my parents marriage and the coming in of a surprise baby at 10 years later after me um, where I was very much involved in his him being raised um, at 10 years old you know until college so like 10 to 20 years old so I got a you know a big wake-up call as to how that can change one's life completely because uh, it did my mom and I had a certain life going on together you know even though I have a dad and a brother we often would pair off and do our things that we were into and my mom and I would you know do our things and then once um, 
my younger brother was born, it's like all that changed. And I had a wake up moment at 10 years old going, oh my God, we don't have the freedom that we had before. We're like tied to this young, you know, baby, toddler, young child who was kind of hyper and uh, high maintenance and, you know, a handful and <laughs> had colic and all this. And, uh, you know, everything seemed to revolve around what do we do with him, you know, like going to the park a lot and going on walks and not really being able to, you know, be in public places with like restaurants even like we were used to it, you know because when you have a crying baby it's just not really fun anymore so it's so so funny because i know we just i think a lot of people are a little bit la la when it comes to marriage and having children and they're seeing only the good side of it and not really looking at the reality of it because there's an underbelly to everything. There's a pro and con side to everything. And so what my intention is today is just to share some of those reality checks, um, some of the things to just know before making these big decisions. And as modern women in this day and age, I we need to be educated about this and educate our young people around this stuff because it's not a joke. This is a life changer. And um, needless to say, I have chosen to be a sovereign, you know, empowered single woman much of my life with not having children because I was very clear I was not willing to do that without a solid partnership in place in order to bring that child into. And so I just wanted to mention, you know, that in America, we do have that fairy tale ish kind of vibe around marriage. First of all, a lot of times, you know, people are younger when they're making this huge life decision. And, and I find it sad that, you know, they're making both the man and the woman are making this huge life decision that's supposed to last your lifetime. And they might be like, in their 20s, or 30s, you know, before maybe they've had enough life experience under their belt or education or have even gotten their career off the ground and it's not an easy thing to do because you end up changing you know over the decades and the years and maybe find that you're not as compatible as you thought you were you I know I see a lot of clients who are mismatched as far as like their sexual types and this, I'm referring to the erotic blueprint system where someone might be a sensual sexual type and their partner might be, you know, a, a total sexual type. And they go about things in the bedroom very differently and have different needs and expressions. And they don't always match up as well as they would like for the long term. Uh, and then, you know, aside from the bedroom, there's just personality types and values and um, lifestyle, things like that, that can also kind of crumble or be a problem down the road if it's not addressed. So I know that part of this discussion is when you're choosing a partner, you know, a lot of times people are just kind of simple simple about it, happy-go-lucky about it. If they feel like enough is going well, then they go for it. And I know men are probably a little bit less discerning around this because, you know, they're not one to analyze relationships like women are. But you need to consider, you know, is your partner a good enough communicator? Because if you have someone who's handicapped in their communication, it really can handicap the relationship if you can't get to the other side of issues. So I always look at the communication skills, their lifestyle, their values. A lot of times these days, you know, there's an addiction or two involved, which can really throw things off if it's not addressed or kept at bay or whatever, because it's, it's a bit of a dead end if you find yourself all of a sudden partnered with someone who's an alcoholic or is using something every day to function and it's not really ideal. Um, so
so getting married is just such a they make it such a permanent feeling type circumstance which I don't I'm not um, convinced that's the best for us I know that children need to come into a stable situation and I think that's why back in the day it took a village to raise a child so that this wasn't an issue in today's world there's there all this pairing off um, with marriage and a lot of times both parents are working full time and it doesn't really create enough of an environment for the children to really thrive when their parents are overextended and having to wear too many hats. Um, you know, when my brother was born, I definitely see how it made us grow as a family and, you know, go deeper in our awareness. It was, it provided a certain amount of challenge that was part of our evolution. And it affected me enough to where I was not googly eyed about having children and was definitely not willing to be a single mom. Uh, did not want that for myself and life is hard enough as a single woman than to add a child onto it and i just saw how much it changed our lives our freedom went out the window and you know there's pros and cons like i said i mean he was adorable he was a chubby baby he he was very smart so i was teaching him stuff all the time reading in books which i enjoyed it's just that, you know, life as we knew it stopped and there was this whole other phase that came in that was just very different where our time wasn't our own anymore. And, you know, it was caring for this child, which can be a beautiful thing. And it also can not be so fun if you have, say, a child that's autistic or a child that's colicky or a child that has a special need or a disability. It can just be quite the handful. And so these things are need, needed to be considered because um, it's not like you can just take off and do a trip like you used to when you were single or go out at night late, you know, with your friends anymore because you have a child and there's just a lot of responsibility around raising that child and making sure all those needs are being met. Um, and so, you know, it just kind of, is it, it's a little more, more complicated and I just thought I would mention that because I, I guess I've just seen so many couples and so many of my girlfriends have this let down feeling of, oh, this is just not as good as I had hoped it would be. And then they're wanting out. So it's like grass is always greener on the other side, right? Where you're just dying to get married and have a baby and you're all googly eyed about it, you know, as far as the fairy tale side. And then you get in there and you're like, uh, reality, you know, of being up half the night with a crying child and in a partnership that is maybe less than what your dream was. And, uh, and then just sort of like feeling trapped in it because, you know, it's not like you can just walk away financially or with a child involved very easily. And I think we need to talk about these things more in our culture, making sure that we're aware of what we're really signing up for. Um, because, you know, that has been kind of this program that you, you know, get married and have kids and have your picket fence, but is it really all that it's cracked up to be or is it overrated? And that's only a question that you can answer for yourself because we're all rigged differently I know for myself, because I'm, you know, I definitely feel like I am a, an, uh, an anomaly in that I saw this stuff early in life by observing my, the struggles of my mom in, in a marriage that was less than ideal. In our case, my dad was an alcoholic and a smoker and... We were a poor family as well, and she was just trying to hold it all together for us kids to have a decent upbringing as much as we could. And
and I just observed her suffer. Um, I know that having that third child also elongated their marriage longer than after it had already been done. And I think that was somewhat a blessing and also it's all in how you look at it. It was my way of my dad, I think, keeping things in place and the marriage in place longer when she was already done with it. Um, and, you know, it can be very vulnerable, vulnerable for a woman to have children too, because it definitely makes things harder as far as getting out of a situation that's not serving you and then having to support this child and you know a lot of single moms are being the mom and the dad and just doing everything and as a single woman doing everything myself anyway is already hard but when you have a child on top of that and you're having to take care of all their needs as well it's just a very depleting situation and I run my own household and my own business single-handedly and it's enough for me to handle it's not something that's easy and I just in particular you know choose the freedom that that brings and I have I get to choose what I do with my time I have a freedom of schedule I book clients when I want to and I you know build my life and my schedule on a weekly basis and I don't have to answer to anyone and I get to have a lot of free time to do my spiritual practices and my health practices and my research and writing and channeling uh, messages and doing things like this on YouTube. And uh, I have, you know, many hobbies and interests and things that I'm involved with socially. And so, you know, it all has to do with our own individual priorities and values. and. I just felt led to get on and I've been channeling this uh, energy that's calling themselves the Divine Feminine Council and they're sort of sharing a lot of truths you know that I think women need to be very aware of in making their choices in life because we are entering a new phase um, in this modern world now where sometimes women are making more than men and we're capable of being independent and having careers and not necessarily choosing that old-fashioned traditional way and I know for myself I just refuse to settle when it comes to <laughs> settling down <laughs> Is that why they say that settling down? I if I'm gonna settle, I'm gonna settle up or not at all. So um, if I'm going to partner with a man, he needs to make my life better, not worse, and not neutral, but better. Otherwise, there's no point in me going there because my life is already amazing as it is, and so that's how I feel like we as women need to look at it and uh, I am you know in my cougar phase you could say and I really enjoy rocking my sovereign woman lifestyle and being empowered and having my freedom and being inspired on a daily basis with what I'm um, participating in and what I'm giving and what I'm contributing and all that I'm learning because I love learning it's such a turn on for me I'm always gaining new knowledge about any number of things and tweaking my lifestyle and you know biohacking and all of it so you know for me to actually be taken off the market and to uh, be with a partner and make a life then it needs to be well matched and compatible and you know like almost destined in a way so that's just how I feel around you know marriage because or or if even if you take marriage off of the table and you just consider like 
say you just move in together, which is kind of like making a life together and you're sharing a home and a life, you know, that's what I mean too. It's like, it's just big decision because if things go awry, then one of you has to move out. And I always just found it was easier to have my own life, my own home. So if things, um, you know, were not long term, it doesn't like up, uproot one of us and like completely turn our life upside down kind of a thing and I also think I had the unique experience of really getting burned or early in life by someone um, that was just out of integrity and it just really taught me you know what I'm just not going to do this in, unless it's really worthwhile it's just not worth my time and energy not only do I want to avoid trauma but I just I'm not interested in um and I think women are feeling this way more and more and someone who's just gonna, you know, take from me and, you know, not really provide enough to make it worth it. And so, you know, these are just some things that I think that it, we as women need to think about a little bit more realistically and practically before entering into these typical initiations that life can bring us because I just sincerely after watching my own uh, parents and so many couples and families through the years and taking care of their children and seeing the dynamics there I just was not very I don't know I guess it was a wake-up call of like I'm, I don't really want this if this is the way it looks I don't want it I don't want anything to do with it and I feel like so many people walk through that door and then are like shocked afterwards at how unfairy tale like it is <laughs> and so you know I have stuck to you know being single for that reason and of course I would love to have a true match show up um, and I'm so open for that and you know it's a little bit I would like to say there there's an abundance of men who fit that criteria and I think we're kind of more in that stage in the timeline where a lot of men are are waking up and you know in the process of becoming that and of course the ones I do meet I absolutely love and I'm inspired by and so encouraged by and I think there's a quite a large conglomerate that have some quite a bit of work to do before they're going to be able to truly match the empowered women that are you know wanting to have someone who brings as much to the table and what else do I want to say about this spirit is there anything that you would like to say in conclusion hmm yeah, well, we're, we're empowered women. We get to make these choices. We don't have to follow the program of our society, one that's perhaps outdated. Uh, we can live our lives and do what we want, and it doesn't have to involve marriage or children. And, of course, I love children. I worked with children for the you know first third of my career, I was a fourth grade teacher and I did a lot of substitute teaching and I was a nanny professionally for years and you know of course my babysitting business was thriving for years and I find children to be so cute and uh, fun and all that and there's also a, a good percentage that are not <laughs> very fun to be with so you know it's one of those things that can go either way right uh, but in general, I'm a sucker for a chubby baby, and I miss that, honestly. And I, children who are a true delight are certainly a joy in life. And I also have experienced the other end of the spectrum where they can also be one of the hardest burdens to carry if there's issues going on with one of them. And so I don't want to come off as though I'm uh, 
I don't want to trigger anybody because we all have our choices and we know what we're meant to do. Some women just know that they're, they want to be mothers and that's their thing. And, and I'm just kind of weird that way where I would make a great mother. And I also know that I am not willing to do that unless I have a good man by my side. And I know what goes into it. And I'm kind of at a place with my cougarness that I would rather meet him and just go travel the world and, you know, contribute to the betterment of all mankind. And that doesn't mean not having a child, but it certainly is a huge decision that would have to be weighed out because it does take a lot of energy and time. And it and it's just a different lifestyle together, right? So there's pros and cons, just like anything you choose. And I just want you to make sure that you know both sides because in our American culture, I think it gets skewed where we're just all la la about getting married and having a baby. Like it's the best thing in the world. And sometimes it's the worst thing in the world. And, and it, a lot of people have a tragic story to tell around either one of those things. So let's be, uh, let's have our heads on straight about it. And, you know, I just happened to have a, a heads up because I got so much experience working with children and working with their parents. And I've, you know, through the years, through my 20s, 30s, 40s, I have observed my friends get married and I've observed a lot of couples. And I, there's very few that I would say, oh, I would, I would like what they have. Most of the time, I would not choose what they have. And I guess that says something about our culture. Yeah, I just, I guess I'm just not really that impressed with what I'm seeing. And so I would rather be independent and not feel stuck. Because I, I saw, you know, and witnessed my mom feel stuck and trapped. And I, that's the last thing I want to be. So I guess I have a conviction around that because... I would rather be single my whole life than have a, a man who's dragging me down and sucking the life out of me. So, <sighs> what if we had a culture where there was plenty of conscious men who are stepping up to the plate and know that they are enjoy contributing to our lives and making it better and you know be providing and protecting and being all the beautiful things that they are because we need them and you know they also have to be an equal match too um and you know having children is something that needs to be a very conscious intentional choice not a fly-by-night type thing in my opinion because you know, it's a life changer, right? So I hope this is helpful, especially for the young women who maybe haven't thought about some of these things and maybe haven't been exposed to some of these experiences that I was so early in life that kind of gave me that big wake up call right off the bat about, wow, okay, this is what's involved. And so I'm going to make sure that I, that I do this really intentionally and carefully um, especially, you know, those of us who've had a really bad experience with either one of them, it, it definitely curtails your desire to um, do that again, like in my case. So, uh, yeah, may, um, may you feel really empowered to make these choices for yourself in a conscious way that's just right for you. And may you feel like you're able to express who you are freely in whatever circumstances you're in and feel like you're contributing and participating with the magic of life and all that it has to hold for you.